So welcome to Feature Fridays and to our Tanzu mini series. This is episode four, uh, where we're going to be discussing Tanzu mission control. So before we go dive into it, let's do the, the round of introductions. And we've got Garrett, Stefan and Jörg. So uh, Garrett, please go ahead and introduce yourself. Yeah, sure. Thanks, Guy. Garrett Lehr, Cloud Solution Strategist with the Moldy Cloud Strategy and Architecture team here at VMware. Thank you, Garrett. And Stefan? Thanks, Sky, a lot. Hello again. My name is Stefan, Lead Solution Architect for VCPP, focusing on modern applications. Thank you, Stefan. And Jörg? Yeah, I'm Jörg Lief. I'm a Technical Product Manager for Cloud Director and all the extensions. And uh, my partner in crime in most of the Feature Fridays. So <laughs> if, you, if you don't know Jörg yet, I don't know where you've been. Um, or actually, Gerrit and Stefan. So thank you guys all for your continuing participation and input into this uh, little mini series that we're doing today. Um, so Tanzu Mission Control. Uh, Gerrit, let's start with you. Do you want to just recap for us what is TMC, um, how it fits with TKG, and uh, you know what are the type of offerings that uh, providers can look to deliver? Sure, happy to. So in, in the last two episodes, um, we talked about Tanzu Kubernetes Grid, right? Which is really our distribution of Kubernetes, which can be deployed on vSphere or through VCD or on any other hypervisor or infrastructure as a service platform, really. Yeah. And, and each of these Kubernetes clusters, they have their own local control plane, right? So you cube cuddle into that, that cluster and then you can interact with it, define policies, quotas, and so on, right? Now, what TMC does, it really acts as a global control plane to all of these local Kubernetes control planes. So if I'm a partner or a customer and I have multiple Kubernetes clusters to manage in different clouds or in the same cloud, I can span TMC across all those clusters and by that, you know, federate the policy management or just the general administration and operations of that cluster, including things like lifecycle management, um, backup, restore, and just you know access uh, access controls and and policies in general. Um, one important difference to TKG is uh, TMC is a SaaS service, right? So it's hosted by us and operated, and then for our partners, it's available as you know a managed service offering. Right. So we've got um, TKGM um, potentially distributed across VCD um, on-premise clouds, clouds in the data center clouds in hyperscaler, um, Kubernetes everywhere, basically. Um, and then TMC comes along as this kind of umbrella on top for, like you said, uh, that um, control plane of your distributed Kubernetes clusters. Exactly. And it's not even limited to TKG-based Kubernetes deployments, right? So if a customer has you know, native um, Azure Kubernetes service or Google Kubernetes engine or um, AWS Elastic Kubernetes engine, besides TKG, TMC can manage all of those, right? So it's, it's really not married to TKG. It has, of course, the, the, the best user experience and capabilities with TKG, but it can also attach and manage any other Kubernetes conformant cluster. Right, yeah. So it is a unified control plane for Kubernetes, wherever that Kubernetes is and whatever it's running on. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, well, that's great. I mean, that's addressing some of the, the key kind of multi-cloud strategies that we're, we're trying to um, obviously realize here. So you mentioned it's a SaaS service. So if I've got my um, Kubernetes offering, like many service providers are starting with on their premise with TKGM and um, potentially VCD, um, how am I going to utilize this, this SaaS service? Um, is it something I would give my customers access to, or is it something that I would um, manage on their behalf? Yeah, so first of all, um, there are multiple ways to get access to TMC, right? There are multiple editions, which, which we can cover in, in a minute. Um, and for our cloud provider partners, the most straightforward way to leverage TMC is through the MSP program which means that they need to onboard you know, themselves and their customers through Cloud Partner Navigator to TMC, right? So that's the portal where they give access or get access to TMC. And from there, it's really you know, depending on the service model that the partner wants to deliver. So they can give their customer self-service access to TMC, um, and then the customer can do whatever they want with the platform, or they can use TMC as, as a managed service where you know, the provider would manage TMC and attach clusters and do the lifecycle management on behalf of their customers. So both is possible um, and both are models that our providers are using out there. 
Okay, and um, what sort of um, variants are there from a, um, a packaging perspective for TMZ for, for partners today? Yeah, let, let me let me share a slide for that because I, I love PowerPoint as, as most of you know by now. <laughs> um, so that's part of a slide that we have shown in, in other um, sessions of the Tanzu mini series as well, where we unpack that, unpack that Tanzu box and we have all these different components in there, right? So last time we covered CKG and now we're covering TMC. And if we unpack that TMC box, there are different editions in there that are available to our customers and partners. So the first one um, that's out there today for MSP partners is TMC Advanced. So that's really the full feature set of TMC with, with everything that you can do. Um, and that's available either as a standalone offering as it is in, in MSP today, or as part of the Tanzu Advanced package. Um, besides that, we have TMC Standard, and that's as the name suggests, a part of um, Tanzu, the Tanzu Standard um, packaging with a limited feature set compared to, to TMC Advanced. And now the two new additions to the TMC family are, um, first of all, TMC Essentials, which is part of VMware Cloud, especially VMware Cloud on AWS. So it's included with that VMware Cloud offering at no additional charge. And um, the same kind of feature set that TMC Essentials has applies to a offering that'll be called TMC Starter. And that's going to be free for everyone. It's not available yet, but we have announced that at VMworld this year. So this is coming soon and we'll have a very similar feature set to, to TMC. Uh, TMC, uh, TMC Essential, sorry, yeah. So if a, mm -hmm. Sorry to interrupt. So if a cloud provider is um, delivering VMware Cloud and AWS today, then uh, TMC Essentials is essentially now included in their MSP contract for that. Um, TMC uh, Advanced, that is, um, so standard, standalone, sorry. Okay, so we have, how is that, how is that charged in terms of the MSP contract? Is it a uh, per tenant kind of contract that you need for each tenant that you got on board or how, how does it work? Yeah, so the standalone version of, of TMC Advanced that we have as a separate um, MSP offering today is charged on a per core basis. So depending on the number of cores in the Kubernetes clusters that are being managed by TMC, and that's then the metric that our providers are attached on, which is fairly similar to what, um, how, how other you know, multi-cluster management tools work. So based on the number of cores in the underlying clusters. Okay, that's fair enough. That's, yeah, that's sim simple enough to remember. Yeah. And TMC standards, sorry, I interrupted you before you, you finished your flow there. Uh, no, that's that, that's basically it. So just okay. one um, addition to TMC Essentials. So yes, that's part of the VMware Cloud offering. So today, um, what it looks like is if you create a new SDDC cluster in VMC, you'll automatically get onboarded to TMC Essentials as well at no additional cost. If you or your customers have an existing SDDC in VMC, you'll need to file a ticket and then they'll onboard you to, to the TMC Essentials um, edition for that. Again, free of charge. So that doesn't matter how many cores you have in your SDDC, uh, SDDC you, you will be automatically covered with the uh, uh, TMC Essentials license for all of those cores. Yeah, exactly. The TMC Essentials entitlement is um, dependent on the uh, SDDC cores or the, the VMC um, spend that you have. Yeah. Okay, great. So slightly jumping ahead, I noticed maybe a little bit out of the boundaries today, um, obviously, VMC on AWS supports Tanzu. Um, Cloud Direct Service supports VMC on AWS. I know there's going to be sort of Tanzu coming to that Cloud Direct Service instance soon. I guess then we'll inherit the TMC essentials, or the service provider will need some sort of TMC advanced MSP contract to cover all of the tenants that they're going to be managing. If you um, have TMC essentials today, would that, would that cover you then for managing any other additional Kubernetes clusters outside of the, the VMware Cloud and AWS instance that you have? My understanding is no. So the only way to get access to TMC Essentials licensing is through purchase of VMware Cloud. So it's not meant to be managing anything that's outside of that particular VMC SDDC. Okay. Okay. So that's great. So um, 
when we're looking at uh, the aversion today, are we going to be looking at advanced, I guess? Yeah, exactly. So this is what's yeah. available today in, in MSP. Um, maybe it's worth to just briefly compare the features of those, those editions while we, while we have PowerPoint. Sure. Um, so as I said, Essentials and Starter that's coming up for free, they basically have the same, um, the same feature set. So that's why it's not an extra column here. Now, all of these, these three commercial editions, they support provisioning and lifecycle management of really TKG wherever it can be deployed. So on vSphere or on native AWS, on Azure, on VMware Cloud on AWS, or even on Azure VMware solutions. So this is full lifecycle management from deployment through scaling and upgrading the Kubernetes cluster. And what all those additions also support is attaching clusters. So this would be managing third-party clusters like AKS, EKS, anything that's not TKG. So those can be attached and brought under management by TMC, irrespective of, of the version, right? Okay. Um, where the first differences come in is in regards to policies. So essentials and standards, they you know, have uh, security policies included, but um, it's a pre delivered set of rules that, that we bring with TMC. If we want to create custom security policies or image policies, for example, I want to restrict you know, pulling images from my cluster to a certain repository, as well as networking policies, quota policies, um, and custom policies, that's all only included in the uh, Terms of Advanced Edition, which you know, our partners have access today through the MSP program. And then um, you know, the last comparison here. So everything in regards to cluster inspection, whether it's you know, conformance um, or CICS, that's the Center for Internet Security. So security inspection, that's only included in the um, advanced edition and you know, basic conformance inspection is included with the um, Tandem Mission Control Standard Edition. So this is both based on the open source Sonoboy project that we um, acquired as part of our Heptio acquisition. Um, and then data protection, again, this is a feature of standard and advanced based on the open source Valero project, um, cluster and workload health metadata inventory, as well as integration with Tanzu observability is um, included in all editions. Uh, some advanced features in regards to Tanzu observability integration are only available in the advanced um, edition. And then the last set of features, um, Tanzu service mesh integration, as well as the rest down here is available in all editions again. So this should give an overview of you know, what to expect from each of these three editions that we have available and coming up in, in VCPP. So I think that's really important to uh, look at, especially when providers are looking at delivering managed services. I mean, that security policy uh, piece with advance and also the inspections, I mean, that's real value add that you can deliver to your customers straight away out of the box. Yeah, and same with data protection, right? So, I mean, we have the Valero project and the um, object storage extension, but if they want multi-cloud managed backup and restore, that's when they need at least standard or even advanced, right? So important to, to understand and know for our providers. And we, I will show the inspection live later because I prepared an unsecure Kubernetes cluster and we will just have a look how it will look like in the inspections. Okay, um, perfect. Perfect. So yeah, so you're, you're absolutely right, Garrett. The data protection is is key as well. And I, I guess when we're looking at this, just from my kind of knowledge, are there any other tools out there that even compare to anything like this in this kind of condensed um, life cycle policy security benchmarking um, capability for Kubernetes anywhere, essentially? Uh, I mean, a lot the super expert on the competitive view, but from all I know, there are products and services that aspire to do a similar thing. So in the hyperscale world, we have, you know, the approaches that Google is taking with Anthos or Microsoft is taking with, with Azure Arc. Um, but from my understanding, they are nowhere near uh, feature parity with what TMC is doing, because those are all software products or, or cloud services that are developed for cloud native environments and, you know, don't take into account the, um, the features that, that partners and customers need when they have TKG running on-prem or in their own data center. So these are all very you know, biased towards the cloud native or hyperscale way of, of running um, Kubernetes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. All right, well, uh, Stefan, so seeing as you, you said you've got uh, something to run through, let's have a, a quick look at yes. Tanzu Mission Control in your environment, if you wouldn't mind. Please share my screen. So here we go. 
So you should see a um, ton submission control window in the browser already, right? Yes, we did. Okay, cool. Because we mentioned already that we could create Kubernetes clusters within TMC. So we can create, for example, on vSphere, on Azure, Kubernetes clusters, but we can attach any cluster as well to um, TMC. I will just show, so we will have to give a, a name for the cluster. Same EM there, we have a cluster group that is already created. And I will just show you how easy it is to integrate a Kubernetes cluster into TMC. Because um, I get a lot of questions, what's needed from a network connectivity? Do I have to open ports? What's really necessary? And uh, will I have to open ports? And will it be a security risk? And yeah. I will show you in a second, because the uh, connectivity is initiated from the Kubernetes cluster to TMC. So it's a purely outbound traffic and there is no, no changes in the firewall needed rather than allowing outbound traffic. But typically you allow outbound traffic anyway. And now I defined the name, gave a name, and here you could see that it's just the command that needs to be executed within your Kubernetes cluster. And this will deploy a small deployment, a small pod with all the entities necessary around. And as soon as these pods are up and running, your Kubernetes cluster is integrated into TMC. I have already prepared it because this takes uh, quite a while. So it takes about 10, 15 minutes to get integrated. And I will just show you what happens. So if we now have a look, so I now, I'm now looking into what happened when we uh, deployed it. So you could see that we have uh, deployed a few um, pods within the Kubernetes environment and that's it what's necessary for integration of your Kubernetes cluster into TMC. So quite easy, quite straightforward. So this is an, uh, basically pulling down an agent to deploy into the pod yep. and the agent then does all the data collection and pushes it outbound to the TMC yep. right. instance. Okay. Right. right. So now you could see I created this Kubernetes cluster, but I haven't deployed the agents on the Kubernetes cluster, so therefore it's unknown. As I mentioned, I have already a um, cluster prepared. So this is the main overview. So you could see that it's a cluster group. You could see it's a Kubernetes cluster running on vSphere. We see the Kubernetes version 1.20.5. We see how many nodes, how many total memory, is assigned to the Kubernetes cluster, how many um, CPUs when the Kubernetes cluster was created. So already quite detailed information. Could see all the Kubernetes clusters, if they are running, the cube um, scheduler is um, running at CD cube API server. You can see all the Kubernetes services running on this node and if they are running. If we drill down a little bit more into details, we see how the Kubernetes cluster is built. So we have one control plane, one master node. We have three worker nodes and could see here if these nodes are in a healthy state, which version of Kubernetes is installed, how the resource allocation and usages, so quite a, quite a detailed um, view into it. And then we have uh, management of namespaces. So we can look into the Kubernetes cluster, which management, uh, which um, namespaces were created. So here you could see we have quite a bunch of um, namespaces created, but these namespaces are not managed by Kubernetes. So then let's have a short view. I will just um, count how many namespaces we have. So let's have get NS. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay, this list is quite quite short. So let's now create a namespace, give it a name that we can identify. So let's call it TMC test. 
we can give a description it's not necessary we do not need to do we need yes we need to give a workspace okay here we see already tmc is quite smart because the kubernetes um, naming convention is just lower cases alphanumeric and hyphen so this should be okay now it's okay i can create the namespace and let's have a look what happened in the Kubernetes cluster. There it is, pretty quick. I hope here we go. Yep. So that that is that communication. Now you said there's no um, port configuration changes. That communication is all via the agent. And I guess some higher port handshakes, yes. random yes. ports. Okay, that's yes. fine. Um, it's an established, so the connectivity is established from the Kubernetes cluster to TMC. And as long as you have a stateful firewall, it keeps the connectivity open. Yeah. Over on a high port. Okay. We can have a look into, into the workloads, what's running there. So we see some deployments, some replica sets. So when you would have a security problem, you could identify, for example, if you see an unknown port, if you see an unknown um, Kubernetes entity, so you see deployments, replica sets, services, so you have quite a detailed uh, view into what's going on in your in your Kubernetes cluster already. Hmm. Inspections, um, I will, oh, yes, we can touch it now. So Garrett mentioned already the Center of Information Security, and I just prepared a Kubernetes cluster that is not that's secure and I ran the inspection. And now we can have a look into the report, what happened. So for example, by purpose, I messed up the permission of the etcd file of the Kubernetes database file. I set some pod security policies so that some of the containers are running in the root context, what you shouldn't do. So I prepared a lot of stuff you normally shouldn't do. And as you can see, TMC already figured out or figured out um, all of them and what I shouldn't do. Here are some less critical stuff. It's again like um, permissions on the certificate file is not right. Some limits are not that uh, set. We do not have any restriction for the um, container registry. And we see as well what's um, configured in a proper way. So we could see that what's here. For example, that's the API server permission is 644 and is owned by root and system. So owned by 00, so that we are sure that the Kubernetes cluster is in a secure way. And now you can work through the list and can, can have a look what's um, what is wrong with it can fix it and then we can rerun the inspection there on. Ste uh, Stefan, just a couple of questions on this. So this is obviously high value, I think, um, in yeah. providing that secure um, report on, on the, the cluster configuration. Um, can these reports be scheduled, batched and executed and, and emailed or is this something you have to come into the console and do? Question number one. And question number two, if I wanted to have something that, you know, had to be a certain way um, and it was different to the CIS benchmark, I don't want it failing all the time because the customer is going to ask me, why is it failing all the time? Can I change that particular variable and create my own benchmark? So let's uh, start with the first question. You can schedule or you, uh, scheduling, I'm not aware of, but you can uh, call or initiate the inspections via API. So you could use some scheduling mechanism that is just executing the API calls and you can download uh, this reports as well and could automate the download of this report so that we can just store it in a secure location. Okay. Second so we is quite a good question and to be honest i don't know by heart <laughs> okay <laughs> good glad i found one that you don't know <laughs> yes it's security related and i don't want to tell you nonsense so 
better, to okay. be honest. What do you have in the actions menu there? In the actions menu, you can download it or oh. delete it. Okay. So it's not no scheduling, nothing. And I just can show you how it's initiated. So you can just here click on run inspection and you can define what um, type of inspection you want to run. So we have several and you just can, can run it. So if I had a, num a number of customers and I was running this as a, management, a managed service, I could create a cron job perhaps just to schedule all the reports yeah. to run um, and dump them in a directory somewhere and pull them into the client view. So the last uh, check I initiated is an inside out check. You can see how slow the progress bar is moving. So this is really an inside out check of the whole environment. And this will take quite a while. So we won't see the output of this because this is really a quite detailed um, check. And we can have a look at events as well. So here you can see what happened with my cluster, you can see here that I initiated some inspections, that I looked into cluster health. So quite a detailed uh, view into what happened with the cluster as well. Mm. And there's another really cool, cool stuff uh, are the policies. So you can create your own policies and can assign policies to your Kubernetes clusters. So for example, here I have a policy created with uh, role bindings. So we can define which permissions you have on your cluster. And here you could see that I, for example, added some cluster admin roles, some cluster view roles and assigned it to, to users. These users are external users coming from, from an external identity source. And for example, we could here um, create some cluster role bindings as well. These are the roles already created in Kubernetes and we just can, can bind it to a group or a user group as well. So quite, quite a detailed uh, method. And we can, could now walk through all this uh, menu entries so we can define image registry. We can, could define network policies we could define security policies, uh, we can define quotas, and we only can even define custom Kubernetes policies. So maybe we have a look into, into a security policy. So here we have already some predefined um, policies and just let's uh, take a custom one. So you can define quite fine granular if you want to allow privileged containers, um, if you want to have name sharing, sharing, if you have privileged escalation, the port ranges, um, which, which, you, uh, which user is used to run the Kubernetes clusters and containers. So I would highly recommend must run as non-root so even if something is going wrong in your container, you wouldn't get uh, root permissions. And here you can define if you allow config maps or persistent volume cl uh, claims, secrets, whatever. So quite a fine granular possibility to um, influence your, your Kubernetes configuration. And you even can define which pass, uh, which um, host passes are mountable, which uh, host passes are usable. So really detailed, detailed possibilities. And with labels and uh, selectors, you can create almost any policy, can exclude entities, can include entities, can exclude, include hosts, containers, whatever. So really fine granular security policy. And the same is for network, for image registry. So quite a detailed, um, detailed possibilities. And you even can create templates on uh, for your for your policies. So we have already some predefined policies. So here we have the YAML representation where you could see some. So what is it? Um, this should be some. 
admission gatekeeper. So this will block some resources. So but these these are, are, are really useful. Um, with the, is there any chance or is there any overlap in your mind with policies and kind of what VCD does with deployment with CSE? No. No, Definitely okay. Not. Because Cloud Director and I guess I mentioned it already several times, our design principle was to, to separate personas and Cloud Director and the persona using Cloud Director is more the persona of an infrastructure admin, defining, creating Kubernetes clusters, but not with that detailed Kubernetes knowledge. So just provide Kubernetes clusters and TMC is more meant for DevOps um, engineers, for Kubernetes engineers, because uh, we mentioned already that with Cloud Director, it's as easy as creating virtual machines as easy as you can create virtual machines, you can create Kubernetes clusters with TMC. And if you are going more into details, it's not necessary, but a lot of these parts uh, need quite a solid Kubernetes knowledge. So imagine if you are setting security policies, if you are setting network policies, you should have at least, at least quite a solid knowledge of uh, Kubernetes already when, when using TMC, when defining policies. Of course, an infrastructure admin can, can use it as well and will just take predefined policies and templates and assign it. But as soon as you want to, to create content, templates, policies, whatever, you would need quite a, quite a solid Kubernetes knowledge already. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think the, the only overlap you would see is, you know, the, the option that both tools can potentially lifecycle manage and deploy yeah. Kubernetes clusters. And, and that's really it, right? So, yeah. so once this is done, let's say through, through CSE, someone needs to define those policies and make sure that you know those clusters are configured in a way that's compliant and secure, right? And without TMC, you would usually do that through the command line or through the Kubernetes API, which you know might be more complicated or require more detailed knowledge and more time than it would require with TMC. So for, for providers, this would be you know offering TMC as a self-service offering on top to make Kubernetes management easier through that tool. Yes. But one step further, um, TMC would actually come in really handy as a true managed services tool, right? So, so when we speak to providers about, well, what are your customers expecting from you in terms of, of offering Kubernetes as a service, they typically reply with, well, they want this to be highly secure, for example. And TMC would then be a tool to make any provider's Kubernetes offering very secure out of the box, right? By defining, you know, highly secure image policies that only allow usage of a private registry or defining the security policies that um, Stefan just showed us, like restricting privilege escalation, um, restricting network communication, network policies and things like that. So mm -hmm. by that, providers can use TMC as a managed service tool to build a really high secure and um, compliant Kubernetes offering, which would then be, you know, different from I'm just building this myself and need to take care of security myself from a customer perspective. And it's a consistent configuration, not to forget, because you're, if you are doing it uh, manually on your own, it depends on, on the day and how your day was and how stressed you are. <laughs> and with TMC, it's consistent. Even if I think everybody is convinced that he's perfect, we know that if you are working, you are doing mistakes and therefore you have quite a high consistency in, in your configuration as well. Yeah, we have yeah. seen these um, access rules and role-based access control, which is really um, pretty fine-grained in TMC. And that really gives you the uh, flexibility as provider to um, yeah, define whatever your tenants, customers or your tenant users need. In, in terms of access to that, um, you as a provider can either um, yeah, offer almost the whole like TMC platform as a self-service capability and just provide the infrastructure, not caring about any um, workloads or um, policies or whatever inside the Kubernetes clusters and leave that to uh, hopefully highly skilled um, tenant user. 
But on the other hand, you can also offer it really as a um, managed service um, where you as a provider have the skill set and define the policies and then just create some like read only or few permissions in the uh, in TMC and give these few access to the tenant users and they can well use their um, consume the Kubernetes clusters, but only within the, yeah, the policies and the security framework that you define as a provider. Yeah, and that configuration consistency is absolutely uh, critical in providing, you know, a secure service and, um, well, even a SLA, right? You want to make sure that everything's in the same uniform way and um, supportable in that manner. Yeah. Um, it even so supports the multi-cloud uh, multi story because now you can create some template for example, for Azure, for AWS, and use different identity providers than using it for TMC, for example, and uh, for TMC, for TKAG, sorry. And in my opinion, this really enables the multi-cloud story and supports the multi-cloud story in a native environment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a great way for providers to extend their managed services that they are doing on-prem or in their data center today and you know bring these to the native hyperscale environments that their customers might already be leveraging right so just put tmc on top and you know ensure policy consistent and secure configuration of those external um, cloud native kubernetes clusters as well as a managed service right yeah and that, that's where you get straight away right just being able to just point it at that cluster whatever the customer's got running today wherever it is point it straight at it, run the reports, and instant results into things that are not configured the way they should be. You may like it or you may not like it, but this enables you as a service provider to act as a cloud broker. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, okay, so I just want to wind back because I'm still trying to think about the, the self-service versus the managed service. Um, is TMC available via cloud partner navigator today as a, a service that you can configure in navigator yeah yes yeah, so can you set up obviously users for particular customers if you're offering a self-service would you do that via navigator as well or is it just kind of like one account and you have to um, set up separate accounts for separate tenants separate nav um, tmc instances sorry yeah, so, so if it's a self-service offering, you as the provider would interact with Cloud Partner Navigator and from there create separate instances for your tenants. So each of them would get their own tenant, right? Yeah. Um, the other extreme would be you want this as a fully managed service where, you know, potentially you could even have, you know, one large shared TMC instance, which, you know, none of your customers would ever get to see yeah. because you as a managed service provider would, would interact with that. Um, the... the that doesn't really have any any cost advantage, right? Because we only charge based on the number of CPUs anyway. So you might as well, even in managed service setting, have dedicated instances per customer. But that depends on how you want to structure your operations and your, your managed service business. But both is possible. Yeah, absolutely. And just from a point of view of um, identity management, if I have a, or oh, my customer has a separate identity provider, can that be integrated into TMC as well? Or is this yeah. um, something that's managed separately? Yeah, no, that's what we had on the feature comparison as well. So you can integrate that with customers' identity providers. Yeah. Okay, cool. So I could offer then my customer, um, I could set up in CPN a new customer on TMC, um, give them full access with their um, uh, identity provider into a TMC instance where they can start managing whatever they want. Or as you said, Garrett, I can focus on the managed service and focus on just pulling all my individual customer instances into one TMC instance, still paying the same, but I've got one single point of administration then, which would be um, good from a, a, a management perspective. Um, and I can then start, you know, delivering reports, and everything else. Um, the, on the reporting, is there any way to generate an, an event or some sort of notification of challenges because I'm just thinking right it's fine once I'm in there running a report but if you know things change constantly in configuration is there any way to um, to generate an, uh, an alarm or an event or something that would integrate with some sort of um, service management system I saw there was a integration button in one of the screens you had Stefan I wasn't quite sure wh whether that was possibly one of those points where you can integrate into a, a different system for ticketing or something like that Yes, so with the integrations, we could uh, do 
integrations into TMC into into observability, but I'm not 100% sure if you could uh, integrate it into a ticket saying system as well. I guess yes, but to be honest, I don't know. All right. Um, yeah, there are some um, events and audit logs available um, for TMC. And if I read that correctly, the documentation, they are available through APIs as well. So you could do yeah. um, in the easiest way, some sort of polling of these APIs and the events logs and audit logs and then um, yeah, have some external logic reacting on whatever you read and get from these events. So, so events are already showed and audit logs are available as well. So for, for the API way, I'm sure, but not if you have an SNMP trap or whatever. Yeah, I mean, tra traps are, well, if you can try and do UDP across the internet, that's pretty much... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Best I think effort that, might not apply there. <laughs> yeah, I think the more likely scenario is you know leveraging the out of the box integration between TMC and and tons of observability, right? Which then federates logging and eventing, not just from the Kubernetes part of the environment, but also from the apps and the workloads that are running. And that would then potentially be the leading tool that interacts with your ticketing system because it federates all of the the information beforehand. And that's why we're going to cover that on one of our next sessions, because that, exactly. that's what I'm trying to get to is like, how do I pull all this together? So I've got I've got a really good way now, you know, in past sessions, deploy TKGS, TKGM. Um, we've now got TMC. So I'm starting to get this full picture, but I'm really wanting to see how do I then pull it all together into my service management system, uh, into, you know, my operational procedures, which sounds like it's uh, the next next feature Friday. <laughs> Okay, chaps. Uh, is there anything else to cover on, on TMC or are we uh, ready um, to close? Yeah, I want to show one, one more thing. If you oh, um, are interested into learning and giving it a try for yourself, um, check out well the tansu.vmware.com slash mission control um, homepage where you can find um, well all the details, uh, further demo videos for mission control. And there's also a test drive button which gives you access to, well, hands-on labs. So we do have a hands-on labs ready to run so that you can um, yeah, get your hands dirty with Tansu Mission Control, um, try the different features within a um, sandbox environment without any um, efforts for you to um, yeah, set up any environment. So absolutely good way to learn more and um, yeah, get a feeling for the different features of Mission Control. Jörg, may Excellent. I share a thread with you? I'm sorry, I say again? I used hands-on lab for our today's demo. Yeah, <laughs> I did. I did see the timeout session in the top yeah. right, saying you have five hours left. Yeah. Well, to be honest, with you, seeing as I only asked you about three hours ago, Stefan, can we do TMC today? I think you did pretty well. <laughs> okay, brilliant. Well, listen, guys, thank you very much again, uh, Stefan. Thanks for setting up that lab at a short notice and using uh, the labs on demand for that. That's good ingenuity. <laughs> and Garrett <laughs> talking us through, and, and your for your support as well. Um, next time, let's look into, like I said, the next kind of level of, of Tanzu uh, with observability. And um, I believe we're going to have some sessions, Stefan, around the data services at some point, yes. which I look forward to. Yes. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Thanks. Bye-bye.